Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we shall see how to calculate the autocovariance function of a moving average process. So this is white noise. This is the moving average process of order one. So Y is a uh, moving average process of order one. So let's start by looking at autocovariance function at times T and T, right? So this gamma Y, T comma T is basically covariance uh, of YT and YT, which is basically variance of YT. So then you can plug in the formula or the expression for YT. Now, because white noise is uncorrelated and its mean is zero, right, you need both of these results, you can open or you can rewrite the variance in this particular way. So what we so variance of wt is sigma square variance of wt minus one is again sigma square so we are left with this expression so next let's see how to compute covariance at time point t and t minus one that's covariance of yt and yt minus one again plug in the expressions for each of these then we are going to open this covariance. So we have four terms here, right? So this is term one, this is term two, and this is the first term on the other side and the second term on the other side, right? So first we are going to consider, so we look at WT and WT minus one, then wt and a times wt minus 2. Then we look at a times wt minus 1 and wt minus 1. Then a times wt minus 1 and a times wt minus 2. So we need to make sure that we take all of these pairs, right, of variables uh, from the two sides. And so always make sure you follow a certain order of doing things. Otherwise, you may miss out on certain combination of variables. Let me see if I can delete this. All right. All right. So when you open it up, these are the covariance terms that you get. So take note that this is going to be zero, right? Because distinct points in uh, uh, data points in a white noise are uncorrelated you will only have this one term that will survive, right? That will be the only non-zero term left. So what you get is uh, at the end, A times sigma square. So now if you wanted to calculate autocovariance function at uh, time t and t minus two, it's basically covariance of yt and yt minus two. You substitute the expressions, you open out the terms, and uh, if you see that you have all distinct points in these pairs, so you're going to be left with zero. So similarly, go ahead and try showing that uh, autocovariance at time t and t plus one is a times sigma square. At times t and t plus two is zero. Any guess? what this will be, right? If t, t plus two is zero, what will this be? So take a couple of seconds to think about this. You can pause the video if you need more time. If you guess zero, then you're on the right track. So let's just uh, collect all of the information um, that we've calculated, all of the things that we've calculated so far, right? So we know that autocovariance function at t and t is this, t plus 1, t minus 1 is the same, uh, anything greater than 2, right, uh, t comma t plus i, if i is greater than 2, this is 0. Now we are going to write it in a more general fashion, right, so our, oh, so uh, take note here, right, that autocovariance function depends on the lag or difference between the time points, right? So t comma t, as long as you have the same time points, the autocovariance function is this. It doesn't matter if this is 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, right? The actual value of t is not important. 
same thing here the actual value of t is not important what is important that the difference between uh, the uh, the two time points is one similarly what is important here is the difference or the lag between the time points so this is the autocovariance function gamma y s t right uh, so it's this if the distance between two points is zero right or if both the points are the same it's a times sigma squared if the distance between them is one and i have the magnitudes here because you could either have this case or you could have this case right so the distance uh the magnitude of the distance is one or the distance is one and uh if the distance is greater than two then uh, the covariance is zero. So this is the autocovariance function, right? So all of these calculations that we did were just to um, get a sense of what the autocorrelation or the autocovariance function looks like. Ultimately, we have to present it in this form. So let's take a look at another example, right, to get a better practice of these kind of calculations. So again, we have white, uh, well, this is not white noise. This is, these uh, WT has a normal distribution, but it could be white noise as well, right? Um, let's see. Right, you could easily have a white noise, zero and sigma square W. So instead of normal, you can just have a white noise. In any case, that's not the important part. So this Vt is this average, right? So it's average of the current white noise past and, the, and one term in the future. So suppose uh, we are looking at the same time points, right? So what is, uh, let's try to calculate the autocovariance at uh, time points t and t so which is basically covariance of vt now so you plug in values for vt right so vt is given by this expression i have plugged this in again you open up the autocovariance function so you will have more pairs here right so it's important that you uh, open this out carefully and follow a certain order when you do this so one third and one third comes out, right? You multiply it and that's where you get this one ninth from. So make sure you're able to do all of these calculations correctly. So because the white noise terms are uncorrelated, right? Uh, there will be many, many terms here, but most of them will be zero except for these three. So these three terms will survive. So we know that covariance, or so this is basically variance of wt minus 1, which is sigma squared w. So we are left with, this is sigma squared w, sigma squared w, sigma squared w. So 3 by 9 times sigma squared w. So let's look at uh, covariance at times t and t plus 1. So this is vt. This is vt plus 1. Make sure you write down these expressions carefully. If you make a mistake in these subscripts, then your answer is going to go wrong. So autocovariance at t plus 1 and t is basically covariance at uh, vt plus 1 and vt. You plug in the uh, expressions for each of these terms. Um, so again, there'll be many terms when you open out the covariance. The only terms that will survive are this WT, WT and WT plus 1 and WT plus 1. So keep in mind that you don't actually have to open out all the terms, right? Because we know that WT is, uh, that the uh, white noise are uncorrelated and centered at zero, we can just match the terms, right? There is a WT here, there is a WT here, so that will come down here. WT and all of the other combinations will be zero. So you don't even have to bother writing those. Then let's see, there's a WT plus one here. Uh, covariance with this will be zero, this will be zero. So forget about it, but this will survive. So we, so that's where this term comes from. 
Then we have a WT plus 2 here. There is no WT plus 2. So covariance with all of these terms is 0, right? So you don't really need to write down each term every time. So we are left with this 2 by 9 times sigma squared W. So let's look at the uh, at uh, at the time point t and t minus one, right? So v t is given by this, t minus one is given by this. Uh, so be careful when you write down these terms; it's very easy to go wrong. So covariance at t minus one and t is covariance between v t minus one and v t. I plug in the points. Um, so let's see what are the remaining points. So t minus 2 here, there is no t minus 2. So all of the covariances with t minus, w t minus 2 is going to be 0. The t minus 1 here, t minus 1 here, that will survive. w t here, w, there is w t here, that will survive, right? w t plus 1, there is no w t plus 1 on this side, so that's all going to be 0. So ultimately, you're left with these two terms and you get uh, that the autocovariance at t minus 1 and t is just 2 by 9 times sigma squared w. So if we take t plus 2, substitute the terms, the expressions for vt and vt plus 2, right? Um, so that's covariance bit at, uh, between Vt plus 2 and Vt. Plug in the expressions correctly. Open out the covariance terms. Again, we don't need to open out or write down all of the terms. Just spot out the common terms, right? So Wt plus 1 is the only common term. And then this is the final answer, right? So 1 by 9 times sigma squared W. So now you can show that, right, go ahead and try this out again. So covariance, try showing that covariance uh, at times t, t minus 2 is 1 by 9 sigma square w again. t plus 3 and t is 0. t minus 3 is and t is 0 again. So to summarize, right, all of this into an autocovariance function, this is the autocovariance function. So gamma v at s and t is basically 3 by 9 sigma squared w if s and t are the same or if distance between the two points is zero. There is a reason why we are writing all of this in terms of distances and you will see that in an upcoming video. So this idea of uh, that the co this idea that the correlation or the covariance depends on these distances is tied into the concept of stationary, uh, stationarity, which will be introduced later. So if distance is 1, this is the autocovariance. Distance is 2, this is the autocovariance. Anything greater than 2, it is 0. So these are the two autocovariance functions that we considered in this slide. So let's just see what does it mean, right? So we uh, looked at how to compute the autocovariance. Now let's spend a couple of minutes to see what they mean, right? So first of all, covariance decreases, right? At least in these two cases, the covariance decreases as the separation between the points increases, right? So covariance is 1 plus a square times sigma square. So this is larger than this. This is larger than this. 3 by 9 is larger by 2 by 9, which is larger by 1 by 9, right? So covariance decreases as the separation increases. Covariance beyond a certain distance, right, is 0. The covariance depends only on the time separation or the lag between the two points and not on the absolute location of points, right? So it doesn't matter that this is uh, 1 and this is 2, or uh, this is, uh, so it would be the same. If this is 1 and this is 2 and this is 3 and 4, the, covari the covariance would be the same. The actual values of S and T don't matter, only the distance between the point matters. And this, like I mentioned, is tied into the concept of stationarity, which we will be studying in the upcoming videos. Here is a practice problem. Uh, please go ahead and try solving this, right? So it's, uh, it's, it would be very useful if you have uh, a good, um, if you're able to solve these kind of problems quickly. 
So in the next video, we shall look at the autocovariance of a random walk. That's all for this video. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.